Fanatic, and welcome to my tiny ranch. Uh, today we're going to play around a little bit. Um, I just started uh, just playing with some materials and just, uh, uh, you know, experimenting, trying to just trying to improve your your tying skills. This is something that I like doing a lot. It's just just playing, just creating. Um, uh, I haven't tried this fly. I haven't uh, tried this fly out in out in the water yet. Um, no idea if it's going to catch fish, but it, it it requires a little bit of skill. So that's why I like playing around with it and stuff. But the 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 best part of this one is I call this one my roadkill, and the reason is it's because it's made from roadkill. Um, it's stuff that I've picked up over the years. And, uh, and, um, and yeah, so I'm just uh, playing around with it, just using different materials, trying to, just trying to make things look good. Um, I've got this, this one, I just did a, a couple of uh, uh, practice ones just so it, uh, I know where, what direction I want to go in the video, but, uh, um, yeah, it was looking pretty buggy. Don't know what it, what it would be. Maybe a, maybe a caddis or something like that, but, uh, you'll see when, once we get going, it's a. It, it's fun. I, I really like experimenting like this. So this is something that uh, I thought I'd share with you guys. And I'm, like I said, I'm just calling it my roadkill because it's roadkill. And I'll show you what I'm using. So I'll switch over to my big camera. So uh, actually, no, I'll, I'm going to switch back to my little camera because it's easier to show you guys the materials. So this is a wing of a snowy owl that I found. Um, it's got most of the materials on here is really large, but down here, down in here, there's some smaller stuff. Um, plus I'm using some of the bigger, bigger wings as well. And using the, uh, under fluff, the, uh, almost like CDC. Um, and then this is a rabbit skin that I found as well. A rabbit. So, um, that I prepared and, and stuff. I've also got some, um, some uh, gopher as well, but I don't think I'm going to use that. Um, and the only non uh, roadkill is I'm going to use a little bit of Zemperfly, uh, Zemperfly straggle string. Just it's just for a highlight. So okay, let's go back over to the the main camera. So in the vice today, I've got a Hens BL seven twenty four, a size twelve. Uh, I'm going to be using Zemperfly um, olive uh, nano silk. Uh, like I said, some Zemperfly. Ice straggle chenille, the longer stuff, right? And uh, then I'm going to be using some of the uh, the, the uh, rabbit, obviously. I'm going to be using some of this CDC-like feather off of the uh, the owl as well for for an underwing. And then I'm going to be using a little bit of the of this portion of the uh, of the wing for the tail. And I'm going to be using. Um, one of these little feathers like I showed you guys from the back here um, as uh, I'm going to wrap it as a wing. So hopefully it'll turn out something like that. Something like that. So. Alrighty, so let's play. So first things first, a little bit of uh, wax on my thread. So I'm going to try to go a little bit slower in some of these videos. Actually, I'm going to turn this light on too. That should help. Yeah, there we go. It'll help me for sure. I'm um, going to go a little slower in some of my videos because uh, I've been noticing that uh, to try to get it under that, you know, that YouTube algorithm thing, that 12 minute mark, I've been rushing sometimes and that's eh, not always good. I want to show you, show you guys good quality videos and I want to definitely want to show the beginners how to how to do things and and not uh, and not take shortcuts right so so there again I've just tied in just tied in my thread put a little bit of a thread base down okay first things first I'm gonna get a little piece of the tail um, so I'm gonna take my feathers and you see how I've lined them up straight like that I'm gonna line them up straight so I can get a nice bundle and the tips end up staying straight right together I want as normal about the length of the shank of the hook sticking past give or take so I'm just gonna transfer that over actually I'm gonna go back to my back here transfer that over to my hand just give that a couple of wraps see how that is yeah I'm, I'm okay with that so now just open wraps I'm just going to make sure I keep this material on top of the on top as much as I can and then come forward to there 
I'm gonna give her a couple of tighter wraps up there. Take my scissors, cut this off on a bit of an angle. That helps keep that, that tapered body, right? So now on this one, it's not gonna be that critical because you're really not gonna see a lot of this. Like you'll see the body sticking through, but you won't be able to tell if it's, it's uh, tapered or not, right? So, so back to the front here. I'm just gonna put in my only non-roadkill part, which is the straggle. Um, I just think this, it just helps a little bit of that, that extra flash, right, in there, um, because it's there. There's nothing but natural materials in this fly. Um, that uh, having a little bit of that flash just helps. So now I'm just gonna give my thread a counterclockwise spin to flatten it and I'm going to just let it sit there. I was, I'm gonna do a split thread technique here. So now all I'm doing is I'm gonna take some of the darker here. There's there, like, if I take a look at this, this skin, there's a real dark browny kind of patch right down the middle and then it gets more gray and then almost white to the sides. So I'm gonna just take some of these. I want mainly the guard hairs. So I'm gonna pull a bunch of these hairs out, see? And then I'm gonna actually hold on to that and I'm gonna pull some of this under fur off. I don't really want the under fur because I don't want the bulk. And you'll see what I mean when I when I tie. I'm gonna just a few more here. Take that under fur out. Make sure these tips semi line up and stay in the same direction. Now I'm gonna take my material clip, whatever type you can, whatever you have. This is just a dollar store fridge magnet clip. I'm gonna go underneath my material and clamp it in. So I'll just clamp that in. Like I said, I'm gonna try to get rid of some of this under fur as much as I can. It really, it's not a huge deal, but it's just, I like it better with, when I don't have the under fur for, for just depending on the pattern, but for the, what I'm doing here, um, I'd rather not have under fur, so. So now I'm just gonna do a split thread technique here. So I split my thread with my bodkin. Gonna give a little bit of wax to uh, to it. Now you can, when you split your thread, you can wax it before or after. I like splitting it after because then I get it inside and out. So now I'm gonna take my material clip. I'm gonna bring this up. And I'm gonna spread this out a bit and make sure this is about halfway. And I'm gonna spread these fibers just a little bit. Just so it gives me a bit of a more of an even body. Now I'm gonna hold my thread here. You can hardly see that, I know it's a little blurry, but behind the material, I'm gonna hold my thread and then I'm gonna give my, my bod, bobbin a really good clockwise spin. And another really good clockwise spin. And then when I let go with my fingers, this finger here, these fingers, it'll spin on me, right? So there. And then I'm gonna do that again. And now I can bring it up and I can just let it spin by itself without having to hold it. So now I've created a bit of a noodle there, see? So now I'm just gonna bring this forward. And every time with this kind of stuff, I like stroking it back, right? There's a, not a huge body here. Now I'm gonna take my straggle string and I'm gonna to try to kind of wind it through there. I'm gonna trap stuff. There's there's nothing I can do about it when, if I'm using this kind of material. There's, I am gonna trap, but once I've got that through, I can pick this stuff back out again, right? So let's just see if, if I can pick this out nicely for you guys. I did the last one. Does take a little bit of effort, but now if you don't want to, if you don't want the flash, then you saw how nice that body ended up, right? So, but I do want some of that flash in there. So now I'm just gonna take my brush and try to untrap some of that rabbit that I trapped with the uh, straggle. There we go. That's coming out now. Some of it.
Okay. Actually looking a little bit blurry. Let's see if I can I have to move my camera a little closer for you guys. There you go. So I'm just gonna just tidy this up just a little wee tad here. Then I'm gonna take some of this CDC under fur and I'm gonna do it like I do with marabou. I'm gonna strip it off one side right from the base and then fold it over on itself, strip it off on one side, fold it over on itself, strip it off, fold it over, strip until I got as much as I want. I want a fairly decent little pile here. I want a fairly substantial underwing. So I've got a little bit of a bunch there. Okay, now I'm gonna hold that tight and I'm just gonna, gonna stroke it down here on my my table with my brush just to make sure nothing's knotted and I'm just gonna grab it and figure out what length I want I want to go about as long as the tail that's just uh, yeah about there so I'm just gonna catch that in with a, a couple of loose-ish wraps and then I tighten it up a bit okay again cut this off and don't throw this stuff away. This is actually, th this kind of material is, makes really good dubbing. So, okay, now I'm just gonna give my thread a bit of a counterclockwise spin, catch all this stuff in. Then I wanna just, I'm gonna use my, my thumb and I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna kind of spread it out a bit and that'll kind of bring it around the side a little bit, right? So. Too bad so now and this is the fun part with this thing because this is this is the big bird and there's not a lot of these smaller feathers that work well but I'm gonna find one here there we go that one right there will work so now I've picked out a smaller feather I'm gonna get rid of my under fluff like you do with any time you're tying in a, a hackle like this my under fluff. I'll take a little bit more here. I want to get down to the thinner part of the stem. This thicker part of the stem doesn't wrap very well. So now I want to have, you can see that it's cupped, right? So I'm, I want to have it so it's going to be tied like that when it, so it lays back. So I'm going to spread this out. I'm going to find myself a nice tie-in point right about there. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to cut so I end up with a bit of a uh, triangle tie-in point. I'm gonna lay that in. So right now that shiny side, if you wanna call it that, or the cupped side is facing out towards me. So it's out towards me right now. So now I'm gonna take my, one thing I didn't grab is my hackle pliers. Take my hackle pliers and just grab onto the stem. Stroke all this material back. I have to say one thing, I, I don't tie a lot with this uh, with this um, snowy owl, but wow, is this are these feathers soft and supple? They really like they, they really easy to manipulate. They uh, now being easy to manipulate also makes them a bit of a unruly sometimes too. So I've gone around twice. Just gonna tie that off three times behind, fold it all back three, four, five times in front, however many times you would like. Nip off that stem piece, nice and tight. Okay, I'll lay that back just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take my dubbing brush, toothbrush, whatever you got, just to help Keep those fibers that get those 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 barbules from that uh, apart, right? See, there's there's several different techniques in this, right? There's wrapping hackle, there's dubbing, there you know using a dubbing uh, um, split thread technique. There's there's a you know folding over like you do with a marabou. So there's several different techniques with doing a fly like this. Um, like I said, I've, I haven't tested this one out in the field, but um, I just know that 
th this will help people out with technique stuff, right? So, so now, again, I'm going to now this time I'm going to take some of the lighter fibers off of this um, rabbit, so that more of the grayish kind of fibers from the outside. You can see that they're not quite as dark, right? So, same thing again. Going to lay that down, and I'm going to. Get rid of my under fur as much as I can. Try to line up my tips. If you can't, you can't. It won't be perfect. It's not a huge deal. Get it in my material clip. So there's my material clip. Now I will do a bit of a split thread again. If you've never done split thread, guys, try it. Especially if you've got these like nano silks or GSPs and stuff. They're not hard to do. You just make sure you do a counterclockwise spin on your thread. Oh, I just moved that. So it's going to be out of focus. Um, you do Make sure you do a counterclockwise spin on your thread and then uh, flatten it out. And then get in behind it with like a, a bodkin or something to flatten it. Oh, I don't think I was in there properly. Right, so let me do that again. So, like you say, I like I said there, I just put my finger in there and then, right, and I, I can put it in behind like this, and that'll help flatten it as well. Just so, if you're having troubles with that, make sure it's way easier with these these nanos and GSPs and stuff. So, so get it in there, release your material clip, keep your your thread tight. That's key, and spread this out. Okay, again, hold that, give your bodkin a spin, bobbin a spin, sorry, bobbin a spin. Slowly let that go so it catches it. See how it nicely gets that into a nice little ball. I'm going to give that another little spin. Get that in there. See, and as I... As I grab this with my fingernails back here, I can push forward and that'll help the spin that I did put into it. It'll So now I've got a nice little ball. You see that nice little rope. So now I'm going to go kind of over top of this at first. Stroke back. Stroke back. Stroke back. That might be, might be a little much that I put on. I don't know, maybe not. It might be okay. Little tight to the eye, but that's okay. It'll, uh, I can clean that up. So it almost makes this into like a, uh, um, oh, what's it called now? I'm having a, a brain fart. The, the head, uh, like almost like a sculpin head, right? But it's going to be with this rabbit, so it's going to be really nice and flexible. So, okay, so now I'm just going to do a bit of a whip finish. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my Sally Hansen's because I don't want to do it there. I'm just going to put a little bit right on the thread. Another little trick for the beginners. Most of the guys that have been doing this for a while know this one, but just put a little bit on right on the thread and that way you don't have to try to brush it in there and get everything stuck together. So now I'm just pulling really hard on that thread and I'm going to nip that off. Then another little trick for the beginners, if you've got a little bit of material, you see there's a, a bit of stuff sticking past my head, pull everything back, get your lighter, and just melt anything that's close to your eye. So there you go. Okay, then I'm going to take my brush again. I'm just going to give this a nice little brush out. Now I could have probably used one, maybe even two turns less of the, of the, uh, rabbit at the front there but that's fine this will move really well this will move really well in the water so I mean like it, it's so supple right that the rabbit so even those guard hairs are really soft on this because this is the body of the of a rabbit not the uh, face right it's not a mask so and then you've got that that little bit of that that uh, that CDC style like under under wing there that'll really move really well right so yeah it, like I said it's just me playing around Here's a slightly slightly different one, right? Like it's 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 almost the same, but it's got a little bit less of the the rabbit head on it. Um, it's a little bit puffier this one, the first one that I tied here. But 
Um, I actually quite like this one, the second one that I tied. I think this one will, will fish really well. It's got a little bit of that sparkle from the underneath the body, and it's got that nice that nice CDC style wing, and yeah, I think this will fish really well. So, all right, so yeah, just take your take the materials you guys have at home and just play, guys. Just uh, use what you got. Um, snoop around the house. Uh, don't get caught by the wife if you're stealing some of her stuff, but. Um, yeah, just play. Just uh, grab stuff and, and try it. And you never know what's going to work. Like I said, and I keep an eye out on the road all the time when I'm out here. And I've got a pheasant and I've got all kinds of stuff. I'm still trying to see if I can ever find a hard Hungarian partridge or something like that. But, uh, um, you know, there's there's all kinds of uh, uh, little little birds around here that I, that I keep an eye out to, uh, for as well. The one that I've really been wanting and I haven't been able to find one is a blue jay. But... Um, and if you guys, I don't know where you guys live, but you guys got to make sure. I'm going to just switch over to the big camera, the other camera again. Um, you got to make sure when you're picking up stuff like this, especially like snowy owl and things like that, that's endangered. Um, stuff like eagle, that kind of stuff. You make sure you contact your fish and wildlife department and let them know that you've picked it up. They'll Usually what they'll do is they'll give you a, a, a number and then you've got to go in and uh, fill out some paperwork just to say that you've you've picked up uh, some roadkill. Because uh, if you get caught with this and without without uh, um, doing that, it, there's large large fines, especially here in Alberta. I'm not sure where you're from, what it's like, but just be careful when you're picking up roadkill that that you at least just contact them and let them know. Most of the time they'll just say, yeah, that's that's fine. Sometimes they won't, uh, but most of the time they'll just you know no problem. So, alrighty. Like I said, just go have fun, play, try these different techniques out, try split thread, try hand dubbing, try, you know, palmering, all these different techniques. Just just give them a try. And, and I mean, the worst comes to worst, you take a fly like the one that I created today for you guys, and, well, I don't like it. So you take a razor blade and cut the material off and you go again. You've got your hook still and and it's all good. But I, I actually think these flies here that I've tied will, will fish well. Um so sometimes you, you, you will create something that'll work really well. Um, but uh, you won't create anything if you don't play and try around, try, right? So, but like I said, this will really help the, the beginners and stuff with little techniques. So um, I'm going to be trying to do that in the future here as well. I'm going to do like a video on split thread and, well, dubbing. So I'll do different types of dubbing techniques. I'll, uh, I'll do a video on ribbing, on how to do ribbing properly, how to tie it in so you don't end up with the bump at the back end, especially for small flies like chironomids and stuff. So I'm going to be doing some tutorial style as well, not just uh, uh, fly tying, um, like whole flies. So so just keep uh, yeah keep in, in, in store. That'll be coming in store uh, in a little while here. So um, if you like the video, just give her a thumbs up. If you have subscribed, Thank you very much. If you haven't, please uh, think of hitting that subscribe button and uh, and uh, hitting that notification bell so you won't miss any further videos. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Tie lines, everyone.